Have you ever sat through a presentation that left you feeling more confused than enlightened or you found it to be endlessly boring? Or perhaps you've been the one presenting, desperately trying to capture your audience's attention only to be met with blank stares and distracted minds. Well, you're not alone. In the world of presentations, it seems that the majority miss the mark, failing to engage and inspire. But why is that? The truth is, there's more to effective presenting than just about having flashy slides or a charismatic speaking style. The real challenge lies in understanding the psychology of your audience and tailoring your message to resonate with them. In this course, we're going to delve into the reasons behind the ineffectiveness of most presentations. From the pitfalls that trap even the most seasoned presenters to the secrets that transform ordinary talks into extraordinary experiences. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a beginner, we'll equip you with the tools to captivate your audience, convey your message with clarity, and leave a lasting impression. Get ready to revolutionize your approach to presentations. It's time to turn those lackluster talks into powerful presentations that leave a lasting In today's impact. dynamic and interconnected world, the ability to effectively convey ideas and information is paramount. Making presentation skills one of the most vital assets for personal growth. Whether as a professional, you are delivering a project proposal in your company or you are an entrepreneur, presenting your business idea to your prospective investors. Whether you are a student presenting about a topic in your university or if you are a policymaker, a politician who delivers important presentations to communicate policies and initiatives to the public, your capacity to articulate thoughts persuasively and engage an audience is a skill that transcends industries and disciplines. Strong presentation skills not only facilitate effective communication but also contribute to building confidence, fostering leadership qualities, and establishing a compelling personal brand. In an era where information is abundant, those who can skillfully package and deliver their messages are better positioned to influence, inspire, and succeed. The power of a well-crafted presentation extends beyond just delivering content. It is a reflection of one's ability to connect with others, share ideas, and leave a lasting impact making it an indispensable skill for personal and professional advancement in the contemporary world. As we move forward in this course, we will cover lessons full of practical tips and techniques to master the art of delivering an impactful presentation through compelling storytelling and understanding the various nuances of high-impact presentations. We have the 4P plan. Prepare, practice. Present for You, which provides a comprehensive approach to creating and delivering effective presentations. Each phase in this model plays a crucial role in ensuring a presentation is well thought out and organized. This is the framework we will use to explain every step as we go forward. Let's move forward with the first step. That is how we should plan our presentation, which includes audience analysis and how to structure your presentation. Know Your Audience Analysis is a critical aspect of effective presentation skills. It involves understanding the characteristics, preferences, needs, and expectations of your audience before designing and delivering a presentation. This analysis is essential because tailoring your message to resonate with your specific audience increases the likelihood of capturing their attention, maintaining engagement, and achieving your communication goals. There are several factors to consider in a know your audience analysis, such as your audience demographics, knowledge level, interests and values, expectations, and what's their familiarity with the topic you are going to present. Understand the basic demographic characteristics of your audience, such as age, gender, education level, and cultural background. Assess the audience's familiarity with the topic are they experts, novices, or somewhere in between? Consider the interests, values, and concerns of your audience. Identify the expectations of your audience. Are they seeking information, inspiration, or a call to action? Consider how your audience prefers to receive information. Some may prefer visual aids, 
while others may appreciate detailed data. Adapt your presentation style to align with their preferences for a more effective delivery. By conducting a thorough Know Your Audience analysis, you enhance your ability to communicate effectively, build rapport, and create a presentation that resonates with the unique characteristics of your audience. Have you ever sat through a rambling, disorganized presentation? If so, you probably found it hard to follow what the speaker was saying. When presentations don't flow well, it's easy for audiences to get lost. This is why it's important to think carefully about the structure and organization of your presentation. Without a defined structure, your audience may not be able to follow your presentation. When this happens, your opportunity is lost, the communication fails, and your reputation takes a hit. For example, if your aim is to persuade people, you'll want to use a different approach from the one you'd use if you wanted to demonstrate how a product works. In this section, we'll explore the three common structures that you can use next time you speak in front of in other In this people. section, we will explore the three common structures that you can use next time you speak in front of other people. The first one is the OBC structure, open body conclusion, the open body conclusion approach. People often call it the tell them approach because you tell your audience as to one, what you're going to tell them, introduction two, tell them, body three, tell them what you told them, conclusion. So you have the flow, introduction, body, conclusion. This structure is simple, effective, and easy to remember. Let's look at each stage of the OBC structure. Your opening or introduction has two main purposes. To grab your audience's attention and to cover the key points that you intend to talk about. Instead of telling people what you plan to say, you can use a different approach and explain why they are there. What will they learn from your presentation? And how will the content benefit them? Essentially, you tell them the objectives of the presentation. It's also important to get their attention right from the beginning. You can do this in several ways. Use humor. Tell a story. Ask a rhetorical question. Play a short video. Make a strong or unexpected statement. Challenge your audience. Use and quote. Appeal to people's self-interest. Request a specific action. Use suspense. Also, if you plan to answer questions at the end of your presentation, it's a good idea to mention this in the introduction so people don't interrupt you mid-flow. The body of your presentation needs to contain your key points. You should present these in a logical order so that your audience can follow them easily. You can include data, facts or statistics, images or diagrams, stories and examples, quotes or testimonials from experts or industry leaders. Remember, reliable sources will strengthen your credibility and trust. Many presenters overlook the importance of a conclusion. But the statements you finish with are what many audience members will remember best. With the tell them approach, your conclusion summarizes the main points in the body of your presentation. If you want people to take action, be specific about what you want them to do. Think carefully about how you want them to feel once you've finished. Your conclusion is a great opportunity to reinforce this. Why not inspire them with a great story, a quote or a compelling call to action? Let's consider an example of OBC approach to structure your presentation on the subject of the impact of AI on the future of work. Let's see how you could use the open body close structure in this scenario. In the open stage, you could introduce the topic by narrating how AI has been shaping discussions in boardrooms, classrooms and coffee shops alike and the impact of AI on the future of work and how it is advancing or changing our professional landscape. In the body, you can include the examination of the current state of affairs, how AI can automate routine tasks and reshape job roles. You can include topics on how AI is already streamlining processes in manufacturing, healthcare and finance, freeing up human capital for more strategic, creative and complex tasks. What are its challenges and future possibilities? In your conclusion, you can summarize the impact of artificial intelligence on the future of work and how it presents the world with opportunities for innovation, efficiency and growth. 
but it also challenges us to adapt, learn, and rethink our approach to employment. Next, you thank everyone for their time and hear their your thoughts and questions. Monroe's motivated sequence is another good structure to use when you need to motivate or persuade. This sequence consists of five key steps. Get your audience's attention by including a hook in your opening point, such as a shocking statistic. For example, if you're delivering a presentation on healthy lifestyle, your hook line can be, did you know that in United States alone, it's estimated that over 30 million people have diabetes and 84 million adults have prediabetes. Create a need by convincing the audience that there's a problem and explain how it affects them. Next, define your solution. Explain what you think needs to be done. Next, you must describe a detailed picture of success. Give people a vision, something they can see, hear, taste and touch. Ask the audience to do something straight away. Get them involved right from the start. If you do this, it's then much easier to keep them engaged and active in your cause. So, there you have it. The five steps in Monroe's motivated sequence. Remember, this is an approach you can use to structure your presentation when the topic is about influencing or persuading the audience. The second step in the 4P model is prepare. In this step, you must prepare to develop visually appealing slides or other visual aids that support your key points. Ensure that visuals are clear, concise, and enhance your message. It could be pie charts, bar graphs, infographics, or images and videos. Next, you must focus on building transitions. Plan smooth transitions between different sections of your presentation. This ensures a cohesive flow and helps your audience follow your narrative. And then, the most important part of your preparation step is to anticipate potential questions from your audience and prepare thoughtful responses in advance. This demonstrates your expertise and helps you handle Q&A sessions the confidently. The third step in the 4P model is practice, wherein you must rehearse your delivery. Practice delivering your presentation multiple times. This helps you become familiar with the content, refine your timing and identify areas for improvement. You can practice in front of a mirror or you may also record your practice sessions to review your delivery, body language and tone of voice. This allows you to make necessary adjustments in advance. This rule suggests limiting your presentation to 10 slides lasting no more than 20 minutes and using a font size of at least 30 points. This encourages brevity and focus. Now we have arrived at the final step in the 4P model, which is to present. The most important aspect of this step is to engage your audience from the beginning of your presentation. As we have already covered some techniques of how to open your presentation using a hook, but it's also essential to actively engage your audience throughout your presentation. This can be done through eye contact, gestures, and a conversational tone, and by encouraging participation through questions or discussions. We will discuss about storytelling more in our next session. Be adaptable and responsive to your audience's reactions. Gauge their level of interest and understanding, and adjust your presentation style accordingly. Familiarize yourself with the presentation venue and any technical equipment. Be prepared to troubleshoot technical issues that may arise. Finally, you must conclude strongly. Summarize your main points in the conclusion and end with a strong closing statement. Leave a lasting impression that reinforces your key message. Audience interaction is a key element of engaging and interactive presentations. Here are some tips and techniques for effective audience interaction during a presentation. Ask thought-provoking questions. Use interactive polls or polling tools to gather real-time feedback and opinions. Allocate time for a question and answer session. Break the audience into small groups to discuss specific topics or scenarios related to your presentation. Design slides that prompt interaction. Incorporate role-playing scenarios. Integrate props or visual aids. Use whiteboards or flip charts for live brainstorming sessions. Incorporate physical activities or movements. Use call and response techniques. Acknowledge and reward audience participation. Incorporate humor to lighten the mood. 
Remember to adapt these interaction techniques based on the nature of your presentation, the preferences of your audience, and the overall context. The goal is to create a dynamic and participatory experience that enhances learning and engagement. Concluding a presentation effectively is crucial to leaving a lasting impression on your audience. A strong conclusion reinforces key points, provides closure, and often inspires action. Here are some techniques to help you conclude your presentation on a high note. Summarize key points. End with a powerful quote. Call to action. Pose a thought-provoking question. Create a visual impact. End with a humorous note. Circle back to the introduction. Open the floor for questions. Remember to tailor your conclusion to the specific context of your presentation and the preferences of your audience. A well-crafted conclusion leaves a positive and memorable impression, ensuring that your audience takes away the key messages you intended to convey. Building confidence while presenting is a gradual process that involves both mental and practical preparation. Here are some techniques to help boost your confidence when delivering a presentation. Know your material. Thoroughly understand your content. The more familiar you are with the material, the more confident you'll feel presenting it. Practice, practice, practice. Rehearse your presentation multiple times. Practice in front of a mirror, record yourself, or present to friends or family. The more you practice, the more comfortable and confident you'll become. Visualize yourself succeeding in your presentation. Picture yourself speaking confidently, engaging the audience, and receiving positive responses. This mental rehearsal can help build confidence. Use positive affirmations to boost your self-confidence. Remind yourself of your strengths, skills, and the value you bring to the presentation. Control your breathing. Practice deep breathing exercises to help calm nerves and maintain control. Deep breaths can slow down your heart rate and relax your body. Adopt power poses before your presentation. Standing tall with open body language can positively impact your confidence and demeanor. Understand that it's normal to make mistakes or experience nervousness. Accept that imperfections are part of the presenting process and they do not diminish your overall effectiveness. Break the ice and start your presentation with a friendly, interactive element to break the ice. This can create a positive atmosphere and help you feel more connected to your audience. Dress confidently. Wear attire that makes you feel confident and professional. When you feel good about how you look, it can positively impact your overall confidence. Acknowledge that a certain level of nervous energy is normal and can enhance your performance. Channel that energy into enthusiasm for your topic. Remember, building confidence is a continuous process and it's okay to feel a bit nervous. With consistent practice and application of these techniques, you can steadily enhance your confidence and become a more effective presenter. Effective communication extends beyond words. It encompasses body language, that complements and reinforces your spoken message during presentations. Here's a synopsis of essential body language skills and tips to enhance the impact of your presentations. You must have a confident posture. Stand tall with an open posture. Avoid slouching or crossing your arms. A confident posture exudes assurance and credibility, capturing the audience's attention from the start. Establish and maintain eye contact with your audience Eye contact fosters a connection, demonstrating confidence, sincerity, and engagement with the listeners. Use purposeful and natural gestures to emphasize key points. Well-timed gestures enhance verbal communication, making your message more dynamic and memorable. Express emotions through facial expressions that align with your message. Authentic facial expressions convey enthusiasm, passion, and sincerity, fostering a connection with the audience. Move purposefully to different parts of the stage or room. Strategic movement maintains audience engagement, preventing monotony and emphasizing key messages. Utilize the stage or speaking area effectively. Proper use of space helps control the energy in the room, keeping the audience focused on your presentation. Mirror your audience. Adapt your body language to match the tone and energy of your audience. 
Mirroring creates a sense of rapport, making your presentation more relatable and engaging. Smile genuinely when appropriate in your presentation. A smile fosters a positive atmosphere, making you more approachable and building a connection with your audience. Adapt to cultural norms. Be mindful of cultural differences in body language. Cultural sensitivity ensures your body language is universally understood and respects diverse audience backgrounds. By integrating these essential body language skills, you can elevate the impact of your presentations, fostering stronger connections with your audience and delivering your messages with clarity, confidence and authenticity. Ethos, pathos and logos are three persuasive appeals that form the rhetorical strategy known as the Aristotelian triad. These appeals are used to persuade and influence an audience in various forms of communication, including presentations. Let's understand each appeal and how they are linked to effective presentation skills. Ethos refers to the credibility and ethical appeal of the presenter. It involves establishing trust and credibility with the audience. A presenter can enhance ethos by demonstrating expertise, reliability, and a commitment to ethical communication. This involves showcasing qualifications, expertise, and a genuine interest in the well-being of the audience. For example, a scientist presenting research findings might emphasize their credentials, experience in the field, and commitment to rigorous methodology to establish credibility. Pathos involves appealing to the emotions and values of the audience. It aims to evoke an emotional response that aligns with the presenter's message. Effective presenters use storytelling, vivid language, and relatable examples to connect with the emotions of the audience. This fosters empathy and creates a memorable and impactful presentation. For example, in a presentation about a charitable cause, a speaker might share personal stories or use images that evoke compassion, encouraging the audience to feel emotionally connected to the cause. Logos is the appeal to logic and reason. It involves presenting clear, well-organized, and evidence-based arguments to persuade the audience. Strong logos is demonstrated through the use of facts, data, statistics, and logical reasoning. Presenters must coherently organize their content, making it easy for the audience to follow and understand. For example, in a business presentation, a salesperson might use market research data and case studies to logically support the benefits of a product or service, making a persuasive argument. Effective presentations often use a combination of ethos, pathos, and logos to create a well-rounded and persuasive message. Clearly, communicate your expertise, credentials, and the reliability of your information to build trust. Connect with the values and beliefs of your audience to create a stronger emotional impact. And finally, support your arguments with data, facts, and evidence to strengthen the logical foundation of your message. By incorporating ethos, pathos, and logos into your presentation, you can create a compelling and persuasive message that resonates with your audience, establishes credibility, and drives your key points home effectively. Storytelling is a powerful and effective communication tool in presentations. Stories create a human connection by appealing to emotions and experiences. They make information relatable and memorable. People remember stories better than raw data or facts. Stories provide context and make information easier to recall. Stories can influence and persuade. They allow presenters to convey messages subtly, making the audience more receptive. Stories simplify complex information. They provide a narrative structure that helps the audience follow and understand the message. Stories capture and sustain the audience's attention. A well-told story keeps listeners engaged throughout the presentation. Inspirational stories can motivate and inspire the audience. They create a positive and memorable impact. Here are some storytelling techniques you can use for your presentations. 1. Introduce relatable characters or protagonists in your story. This helps the audience connect emotionally with the narrative. 2. Introduce a conflict or challenge to create tension in your story. 
Resolution provides closure and reinforces key messages. 3. Ensure that your story aligns with the main message or theme of your presentation. Irrelevant stories may distract from your key points. For example, if your main message is about innovation, you could narrate a success story from your industry about innovation. 4. Personalize your stories when possible. Share personal experiences or anecdotes to make the content more relatable. You can narrate any personal experiences. 5. Be genuine in your storytelling. Authenticity builds trust and credibility with your audience. 6. Pay attention to pacing. Control the speed of your storytelling to maintain audience engagement and emphasize key points. 7. Encourage audience involvement by asking rhetorical questions or prompting reflection related to the story. Remember, effective storytelling is not just about entertaining. It's about conveying a message, making it memorable, and influencing your audience. Incorporating these storytelling techniques into your presentations can significantly enhance your ability to connect with and impact your audience. Effective presentation skills encompass not only the content of your message, but also the delivery and the role of your voice is paramount in engaging and influencing your audience. Your voice is a powerful tool that conveys emotion, authority and personality. It serves as a vehicle for your message, influencing how your audience perceives and connects with the information you present. Voice modulation involves varying pitch, tone, pace and volume to add dynamics to your speech. A monotone delivery can lead to audience disengagement, while effective modulation keeps listeners attentive and interested. Varying pitch and pace help emphasize key points, making it easier for the audience to follow and retain information. Voice modulation allows you to express a range of emotions, from enthusiasm and excitement to empathy and seriousness. Emotional resonance connects you with your audience on a deeper level, making your message more impactful. It also helps in establishing authority. It commands attention and establishes you as a knowledgeable and trustworthy speaker. Here are some tips for effective voice modulation. 1. Practice vocal warm-ups. Warm up your vocal cords before presenting to ensure flexibility and prevent strain. 1. Practice deep breathing techniques to control your breath and support your voice. 1. Experiment with different pitch levels and tones to add variety to your delivery. 4. Use pauses effectively. Strategic pauses can build suspense, allow for reflection, and emphasize critical information. 1. Project your voice to ensure clarity and audibility, especially in larger spaces. 1. Articulation is very important. Enunciate your words clearly to enhance understanding and prevent mumbling. In conclusion, recognizing the importance of voice and mastering voice modulation is pivotal for effective presentations. Using these tips and techniques, you can captivate your audience, convey messages with impact, and establish a strong and engaging presence in various professional settings. In concluding our presentation skills training course, we hope we have provided you with insights and techniques to deliver high impact presentation skills. Remember that mastering presentation skills is an ongoing process and the knowledge you have gained through this course is a foundation for your continued growth. As you venture into your future presentations, may confidence be your companion, authenticity your guide and success your constant companion, wishing you the very best as you embark on your journey to becoming more effective and influential communicators. Thank you for being a part of this learning experience and please help us by subscribing to our channel Learning Ocean.